Hello, my name is Jim White, and welcome to People in Action. Africa is the continent where most of black America has its roots. It is also the continent where that both, most black Americans have very little knowledge of. My guest this evening is Mr. Stephen Tyson, who is currently the Associate Professor of Humanities and Fine Arts at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. Mr. Tyson, in 1988, was selected as a Fulbright Hayes Fellow to participate in the Indiana University of Pennsylvania Fulbright Group Project in Nigeria, Africa. Tonight we will be talking about his experience in Africa and some of the things that we as black Americans and as a people as a whole do not understand about Africa. When we come back, we'll be talking to Stephen Tyson about Nigeria. My guest is Mr. Stephen J. Tyson, currently Assistant Professor of Humanities and Fine Arts at the University of Pittsburgh, Johnstown. And our topic is his trip to Nigeria. Stephen, welcome to People in Action. Thank you very much. Uh, and I know you can see all the artifacts here. We'll be talking about some of those <clears throat> a little later on in the show. Mm -hmm. But first, what is the Fulbright Hayes Fellowship? Fellow? Well, the Fulbright Hayes uh, Fellowship essentially is a grant that's given by the uh, United States government that enables uh, <coughs> educators uh, to travel to different parts of the, uh, of the world in order to gain a first-hand experience of those cultures. The idea being is that we are in a global environment now where people are uh, coming together and it's important for us to understand our relationships with other cultures as it is important for those cultures to also understand us. Mm -hmm. When you were selected for that, how did you how did you feel? Well, I was thrilled. I was thrilled when I had the opportunity to travel to a different country to learn firsthand the experiences that uh, that I might encounter uh, on a personal level. Uh, traveling to the African continent, uh, I was very excited about because it was an opportunity for me to touch base with a culture that I did not know that much about as an African American. And uh, I felt that given the opportunity as a professional, I could bring back that experience and share that with my students, with the community at large, uh, from all backgrounds, all ethnic groups, so that a deeper uh, appreciation for this particular culture or country in, uh, in Africa uh, could be appreciated by people who, like myself, had uh, little or, or limited knowledge about that continent. Did you have any preconceived ideas about what you were going to see when you landed in Africa? Well, I didn't have too many preconceived ideas. I did have some ideas about the environment. Uh, as a young man, I had traveled to the Caribbean. I have relatives in the Caribbean. So in, in the islands in the Caribbean, you have palm trees. Uh, the weather is, is warm. Uh, and it's a, just a beautiful mountain ranges and uh, in the countryside. So I had some sense of what uh, Africa might be like from the things that people had, uh, had told me. And as part of the group project, there were people from Africa, from Nigeria specifically, who came to the workshops that were held before we traveled in order to give us some sense of the, the background, the culture uh, of Nigeria. So I didn't have any preconceived ideas uh, in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. And when I went over there, of course, um, a lot of the expectations that were shared uh, among us as a group uh, uh, came to light. And, uh, and it was in, in line with the kind of uh, experiences that were expressed to us by those who had actually lived or traveled to that country. What did you find when you arrived in Nigeria? Well, I found a lot of different things. Uh, when we arrived, we arrived in Lagos. Lagos, Nigeria had been the capital of the country, the federal capital of the country. It is now Abuja, which is central, centered in the central part of Nigeria. When we got to Lagos, uh, well, one of the first things is we looked out the window as the, as the plane was descending uh, into Nigeria. And I remember looking at the beautiful mountains, the palm trees, 
uh, it was during the rainy season, so you could see the storm clouds and the rain falling one part, and the light in the sky was, uh, and the sunlight was coming down in another part. And I thought about the richness of the soil, the vegetation. And as we got closer and we got into Lagos, I began to see the cities. I began to see uh, the communities, the, the populated towns. And Lagos itself is a very large metropolitan city and area. Tall skyscrapers, uh, traffic jams, cars, Peugeot, Volvo, uh, back and forth. So it's a, it's a densely populated area. And uh, uh, the expression in the group was that, well, if you can make it in Lagos, then you can make it in New York, you know, just in terms of comparison, because it is heavily congested. What, what were the people like? What were the African people like in, in your conversations with them? Well, generally, people were very open, uh, very friendly, very warm. Um, of course, someone traveling to uh, a, a foreign country, the people who are indigenous to that culture may have um, a sense of um, curiosity about you as an American or as a foreign traveler. And so they asked as many questions about me and uh, where I came from as I asked of them. We as black Americans, Afro-Americans, mm -hmm. know very little about the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. and in particular Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How did you get any idea of how the African people view us as black Americans and how we came from there, from that country to this country? Was there ever any conversation about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, there was some conversation about that. And the, the generally, I would say that um, the, as traveling over there as an African American, I was regarded, as I say, and greeted rather warmly. In many respects, I was considered uh, somewhat of a long lost brother, uh, someone who was returning, in a sense, uh, to the continent. Now, of course, historically, um, uh, during the Atlantic slave trade, uh, Nigeria ju was just one country uh, that uh, where the transportation of slaves uh, was brought over to um, the Caribbean, the United States, parts of Europe, and uh, South America. Uh, others, Ivory Coast and Ghana, Senegal were others. Uh, but a significant number of, of African people come from Nigeria. About one in every four Africans is a Nigerian. In that country now, there are about 115 million Nigerians. This is just in the... Just in Nigeria. Okay. And so it's the most populous country uh, in, on the African continent. Okay. So generally I would say that um, uh, the feelings about uh, me and some of the other members of our group, some of which were African American, um, was one of warmth and uh, greeting. They were quite aware of the problems uh, that African Americans face in this country. Uh, they have um, their problems too. They are in an economic recession. Uh, they have been colonized uh, for about uh, 80 years and then independence came in 1960. Uh, but they are very aware uh, of the events taking place in the United States, more so than we are of what's taking place in that particular country, much less Africa as a continent as a whole. So I'd say the feedback that I received was basically very positive. Well, if I can remember correctly, my geography, Nigeria is in the central western part of the continent. That's correct. Okay. Just off the Atlantic. We hear a lot about South Africa. Mm -hmm. how, how, what kind of impact is that having on Nigeria? Well, the relationship between South Africa and Nigeria was not a, a focus in, in much of the conversation we have. But be, obviously, there was a great deal of sensitivity uh, to the state of affairs, and there is a sense of solidarity with the struggles of the people of South Africa in Nigeria. Okay. Well, when we come back, I want to talk about the cultural change and the westernization of, uh, <clears throat> of Nigeria, and how is that having an effect on, on the country. When we come back, we'll talk about that. We'll be right back. My guest is Mr. Stephen Tyson, assistant professor at 
University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. Our topic is Africa. Uh, I want to talk about Africa, traditional Africa, modern, and specifically Nigeria. What is happening there? Is there a Western influence or European influence starting to happen in the country? And what effect does it have? Yes, well, there is a great deal of Western influence uh, uh, in Nigeria. I can speak about Nigeria mm -hmm. specifically. And um, the reasons for this are, are varied. One of the reasons, of course, is the colonization period that brought a lot of the uh, systems and institutions of Western Europe, particularly Britain, into Nigeria. And so through that particular system came a lot of the trappings and the formalities that were brought along by the British into the country. Uh, in contemporary terms, you have the development of oil, uh, oil production in the early 1970s, late 60s, early 1970s in the country. And with that newfound wealth uh, came a desire in many respects or in many quarters uh, to acquire many of the uh, material trappings that existed in Europe and the United States and bring them in to uh, Nigeria. Many of those things were uh, important in terms of a, a status uh, point of view in the country. Uh, there are other Western influences, of course, in terms of music. Now, one of the challenges, of course, in Nigeria, and that has existed uh, throughout the period of colonization, but is really developed now, is to try to get a sense of uh, where the real fundamental values lie that complement the interests of Nigerian people, of Nigeria as a country. On one hand, you have traditional values. Family is very strong and remains very strong. Uh, certain ritualistic uh, systems that accompany the family structure and religions of that particular country um, were sacrificed to some measure uh, to absorb the Western systems of uh, government, uh, the, the influence of Christianity, of Islam, uh, all of these were factors that changed the way that people saw themselves and their environment uh, to a significant degree. Nevertheless, traditional values, traditional religions still survive and persist, and they are very important. The family is the core. The family is the basis. Uh, you can have someone who is a cousin, a distant relative. They will be considered as cousins, and not as cousins, but as brothers or sisters. Mm -hmm. So there is a very close tie that exists. These are some of the things that people want to hold on to and strengthen. On the other hand, there is a recognized need to not only develop and uh, uh, develop the oil production, but there is also an interest in developing high technology in the country. Uh, technology is important, but also the technology to develop agriculture is something that is also important because as the oil market began to, to dip and production went down, there was a need to develop the natural resources, the raw materials that exist in the country. And when the British were uh, colonizing uh, Nigeria during the late 19th century, one of the interests uh, of the raw materials, one of those was palm oil. And that you find primarily in the lower central uh, area of Nigeria. So there's an interest in trying to uh, claim and hold on to the natural resources to develop that, hold on to some of the traditional values, the decision-making process of what is important, and at the same time adapt the new technologies, industrialism in a way that doesn't override those values but complements them so that they work together when well, that's what's happening now we just recently started i guess over the last three maybe five years to get
so fashionable, and you see younger people uh, with these as well. And these are all hand carved. And these are all hand carved. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. This particular item here is a. Uh, pouch that you would wear, it's sort of like a wallet, and you would wear this around your neck and lower this and open it up, hmm. and here you have a little pocket, and you slip it back inside, and you carry that around your neck. And you'll notice that this particular uh, item you will see worn by a lot of young uh, people today. And uh, so it's very popular in the United States, or growing in popularity in the United States. Uh, this particular uh, item is a carving of a young man and an ancestral or spiritual uh, figure above the head. This is something that is, this is not a mask. This is something that will uh, be displayed on a wall. And so this is something that I picked up in South Central Nigeria. It's just a beautiful carving. How, how much African art now is starting to come into the country? Into the United States. In the United States, States yes. Is it? Well, it's beginning to, to uh, develop. An interest mm -hmm. is beginning to develop. Uh, as our interest in terms of the world, the global perspective okay. is developing, you'll find a lot more artifacts coming into uh, the U.S. I know we're not going to have time to go to all the pieces, but this okay. one here is really Okay, that's, this item is, a, is nice. a cola dish. This is a, a, a bowl Can and, a, a, shot and of a pig. That? Okay. This cola dish, uh, the cola nut is something that is traditionally given to guests who arrive in your home, and you bite it, and it's, uh, it's a very uh, well, that is bitter really nice. uh, taste, but it's uh, part of the tradition. Mm -hmm. This is a shadow figure. This is a neo-traditional form that is found in Benin. It's a beautiful woman, uh, okay. abstract well, uh, heavy. design. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. What kind of wood is this? Uh, the wood would be a cola wood, red wood, iron wood. There are a variety of different woods that okay. are used for these purposes. Okay. This is a, uh, a chief. This is the Oba. This is a, uh, one of the traditional uh, rulers of uh, Benin. And this is a sculpture that was given to me as a present. Uh, and it's a beautiful wood carving. This is some, the kind of item that you would see in the 15th, 16th century. Uh, in Nigeria, basically uh, in the court palaces. Let's get this game. This is what you were talking about. Okay, That's heavy, too. This is an Ayo game. The, the game is called Ayo. And uh, okay. if you can open it up, you'll see that it consists of a group of uh, seeds or can nuts. Can you get that? Are we getting a good shot of that? Okay. And uh, it sort of like uh, follows a backgammon sort of game where the pieces circulate around the board and they're collected uh, by the players. And it's a fascinating game, and I saw a, a uh, example of this game also played in uh, the Caribbean when I was down there. So the influences do travel, as does the music as well. Okay. And this uh, particular gourd here has seeds in it, and this can be found in northern Nigeria. It was produced in northern Nigeria, but it can be found in homes as a symbol of good luck, good fortune in the corner of a room. So this is uh, something interesting. And uh, this item here is um, uh, a leather pillow. It's, you're running the cameraman crazy. We're going up <laughs> and down, but that's right. He'll okay. get a shot of it. OK. This is a uh, leather pillow, and it has the seal, the symbol of the Nigerian uh, federal uh, government, federal mm -hmm. republic. And this item down here is a footrest. Well, we also better, we better pick it up so we, we okay. won't. Oh. Uh, we'll <laughs> OK. How's, how's that? OK. Can we get a shot of that? Yeah. This is uh, leather and snakeskin inlay. And it's a footrest. It's beautiful, very durable. And uh, it's just a beautiful item. And I brought back uh, several of those. Mm -hmm. OK. We have one more item. And I think that's the oh, yes. piece there. And this particular item was designed in Calabar, which is the southeastern part of Nigeria. Uh, this is a uh, top garment. And I, uh, in a sense, participated in the design of this. Okay. This is a combination of traditional forms and uh, contemporary forms. And the woman who designed it uh, simply looked at me, uh, sized up my measurements, and designed it in one day. OK, one question before we go yes. to commercial. Have you worn this outfit yet? Yes, I have worn this. OK, we'll be right back after this commercial.
My guest has been Mr. Stephen Tyson, <clears throat> Assistant Professor of Humanities and Fine Arts at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. And by the way, uh, Stephen will be offering a course in African art uh, coming in the near future, but he will also be doing presentations on African art and an explanation uh, on Nigeria in this fall. So if you want to find out when those particular things are going to happen, just call UPJ. Stephen, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on the show with me. Well, I know we haven't had enough time <laughs> to go through everything you want to talk about. Hopefully yeah. we can get back and do another show later. I thank look you very to much. That. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we end the show. Uh, one in particular, and that is on August the 14th, there's going to be a decision made at the Johnstown School District that relates to the contracts of their administrators. Included in these contracts is Dr. Levi Hollis, who is presently the superintendent of schools in the Johnstown School District. Controversy is emerging. Uh, if you were or were not at the last meeting, you probably heard about it, where people are asking the question, why is Dr. Hollis's contract not going to be renewed? Nothing has been said publicly on whether or not it's going to be renewed. That's supposed to happen on the 14th. But around the town, people are saying that it's a political decision, that the decision has already been made, uh, that it's black. You better find out what's going on. Dr. Hollis has been a good superintendent. All the things I've heard about him, he's put in a 10-year plan. The scores are up well, with the Johnstown School District students. Get out and find out what the real issues are. This is just my first commentator, commentary. But on the next show, we will talk about both the political side and also the racial side. This is Jim Weiss, and thank you for watching, and see you next time.